Good afternoon, Sean here from Mountains Garage. Went to Florida last week. This week I've been kind of busy, but it's Friday afternoon. I figured I'd shoot a quick video about roll cage construction and materials. First, let's talk about mild steel tubing. Your six point cage, your bare minimum, is spec to be inch and three quarter, 0.118 minimum wall thickness, mild steel. Don't confuse inch and three quarter drag race spec tubing, 0.118 minimum wall thickness, with stock car tubing, because all the way to the Cup Series in NASCAR, they run inch and three quarter, 0.095 wall thickness, and that's too thin for drag racing. Other than your six point cage, once you graduate into a full roll cage, which is when the bars, the a roll bars behind your cage comes forward and builds your front structure with a door bar. Now you're talking inch and five eighths, 0.118 minimum thickness. You have to be old like me to remember, but in 1991, NHRA changed their minimum wall thickness for mild steel tubing. The old spec was 112, 0.112. So on 120 wall tubing, which has a mill spec of plus or minus six thousandths or so, 112 would still pass. Now, they changed it to 118, and most of the time your 120 wall tubing wouldn't pass the sonic check at the chassis cert. They junked out thousands and thousands of cars that needed new chassis, mine included. If you order a roll cage today, you have choices in mild steel. Your cheapest choice is going to be 0.134 wall thickness EWS, electronic welded seam. They went to that because it's available and it's probably always going to pass. I got a piece right here. It measures like 0.128 in most spots. So that's going to pass a 118 sonic check. You can buy a roll cage. It's an additional cost option in 0.120 DOM, drawn over mandrel. That mill spec is still plus or minus 6,000, so they charge you extra because every time they make a piece and bend it, they sonic check it for you. So when you get it and weld it together, you're probably gonna pass the chassis cert. So for this reason, I bought myself a inexpensive, it's like 65 bucks, sonic checker. It's actually so cheap, I have to convert it from metric to decimal, but that's okay, it's not hard. And before I'm going to add on something, go buy a car, whatever, I'm going to take that with me. And you, just like the sonic checker that the guy uses at the chassis cert, you put a little grease on the tubing and it measures the thickness for you. Pretty slick. Drum molly tubing. The fastest you can go with mild steel is 750, quarter mile. After that, you have to have chrome molly. Chrome molly isn't necessarily, well, it is stronger, but because it is stronger, they let you use 0.083 thickness minimum, and you get a weight savings. If you ran this the same thickness as the 134 wall mild steel tube, and you'd have a super strong car, but it'd weigh a ton. <laughs> With chrome molly, it has to be TIG welded. They don't, there's no exceptions. Mild steel, you can MIG weld or TIG weld. I prefer the TIG weld because they're nice and small. A MIG weld is hard to make small and it just doesn't work that way. If you were to go to all the trouble to build a 750 mild steel car and TIG weld it, you should have used chrome molly because you could go faster, your car would be more valuable, and you went through the same effort other than maybe three or $400 extra to buy chrome molly compared to mild steel. So think about the future and when you go to sell it, what the value is going to be. A nice TIG welded chrome molly car is always going to be worth more, a lot more. And safe. So now you made your tubing choices and you're going to attempt the project yourself or have it built. Choose what you want to build, spend about $35 and get your SFI spec if you're going to build it yourself. This does two things. One, it tells you exactly what every piece of tubing can be for size. The minimum spec. You can always be bigger, I suppose, but this is the minimum. If you don't follow this, you built the swing set. Not only that, and I'm not a chassis engineer, but boy, here's some pretty good ideas about how to build a nice cat. Nowadays, it seems everybody has enough horsepower to outrun their chassis, sir. 
So when you're planning it, spend wisely and put your efforts into it. Probably, hey, if you don't not comfortable with the chrome molly, because it's a pain, and TIG welding, also a pain, probably time to have a guy do it for you. There's lots of good action. And the guys that, that may watch this video, they're actually chassis guys. God bless you. you. You can do things I can't. I can do it for myself. And I'll try to lay under the car and weld upside down. These guys do it every day. Make it look easy. I watched a video a few years ago from Don Schumacher Racing. And there's two guys in Hawaiian shirts, shorts, and flip-flops with that welder welding up a top fuel dragster. They were going down the side together, and that was their method. Nowadays, they've gone to the small inverter welders, little suitcase ones you can carry around. That thing's a dinosaur behind me, but either way, it gets the job done. And I don't believe there's a weld certification for chrome molly race cars. So... If you got this far in the video, you might be thinking about doing it yourself. So you're going to need a couple tools. Notching. This was actually, this is a chrome molly piece. I actually did this with the hole saw type notcher. Excellent fit up. You can see it. I don't know if you see it. Uh, it wasn't an expensive one. They make some really nice ones now, three or four hundred dollars. Uh, I would have one, except I came across the mill and a lathe, and that's my method now. I have a giant end mill that's the same size, inch and five eighths, and uh, it does a pretty good job. The trick is holding the tubing, but I got enough vices to do that, so it works pretty good. Buy a pre-bent kit for your car. They're, they're close to fitting. They're not necessarily, I like to tuck it in. If I look at the side of the car and I can't see the roll cage, I think I've done a pretty good job. You can't hide it all but you can hide most of it. I don't want to see the whole piece of tubing down in the window because that means it's too, it's too low in the car and you're gonna hit your head on it, your head may stick above it, it's dangerous. The trick to getting a nice tight fitting roll cage up close to the ceiling is to build the upper structure, tack it together in place and lower it enough so you can weld the top of it and then set it back up on the whatever it sits on, whether you have a full frame car or a unibody car. We'll get to that in a minute. But sometimes you've got to blow holes in the floor or do something to get it down so you can weld the top. It's legal to weld three quarters of it and put a brace on it, but I don't know. I'm not going to do that. Driving a car with a piece of tubing that may hit me in the head, I'm not that smart to start with. I don't want to make it worse. If you have a full frame car, the rules say your roll cage has to attach to the frame. If you have a subframe car, unibody, then you weld these to the floor, and then you weld your tubing on top. The most economical way to build a roll cage or a chassis is to buy the tubing in 20 foot sections, 20 plus, 20 to 22 foot sections, and bend it yourself. I have, the brand is Affordable Bender, uh, three or four hundred dollars. It does a good job, it actually, kinks the tube and less than the, the pre-bent ones that whatever they're using for a machine puts more of a kink in it than my you know, $400 bender does. There's nice hydraulic ones available and this gives you the freedom to really make it fit nice and if you make mistakes, well, you got lengths of tube and you just got another piece and try to use that piece you ruined elsewhere. The old chassis kits that you can still buy, uh, they used to tell you how to build a chassis jig out of a piece of plywood and some 2x4s as long as it's flat and level that's all that matters uh, I've never had a chassis table I actually have pots to build when it's sitting outside in the snow and I'm actually going to build myself a chassis table I have a nice flat bench right here when I had them pour the floor from my garage this garage right here they tried to talk me out of it but I wanted it as level as they could possibly get it I didn't care about drainage I just wanted the flat floor so I could build stuff. If you're gonna put a full chassis under your car, you're gonna pretty much cut out all the inner structure, which I did to my 70 Chevelle SS 454, which today is worth a lot of money. Back then I paid $300 for it at a used car lot. Drove it you know, through high school, the end of high school, and then back halfed it, and then I finally put a full tube chassis under it. Learned to weld on that car. Sold it to a guy in Michigan who I'm still friends with because he lived through the crash. So my welding, while it wasn't pretty at the time, at least he lived through the crash. 
God bless. So don't be me and learn how to weld on your first chassis. <laughs> That's what I did. I bought a welder and went for it. It all worked out, but I wouldn't recommend it again. That was teenage Sean. He, uh, he knew everything, I guess. So that's a brief overview of roll cage and chassis construction from about 10,000 feet. There's a lot more details to know. I probably missed a few. I probably missed a lot. Study for yourself, but thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, please.